What's up guys, my name is Preston Palmer, Student Engineering, where my goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering. So in this video, what we're going over is couple moments. And if you find it helpful, please subscribe. So what we need to understand first is that a couple in statics is two forces that are parallel to each other and equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. And they are separated by a distance d that is perpendicular between the two forces. And that can be shown as a force, we'll call it force F, and another force going the other way, we'll call it negative F, and our distance d, and we'll show that they have right angles coming off like that. So a couple moment is created by a couple where you have two forces and they're equal in magnitude and parallel to each other and you're causing rotation with those two forces. And so what we need to understand about couple moments is that they are a free vector. Remember that mo a moment is a vector and in the case of couple moments they're a free vector. But basically unlike regular moments which have to have a fixed axis of rotation, a couple moments can cause rotation about any point. And how we prove that is if we have two vectors, again we'll call it vector F, and another one called negative F, and we have two points on those forces, we'll call that one A and this one B, and we have a position vector going from point A to point B, and we'll call that position vector R. And so we're going to have another point out here, we'll call it point O, and it is going to have a couple position vectors coming off of it, one going to point A, and we'll call this one R sub A, and another one going to point B, and we'll call this R sub B. Well, if we were wanting to find the moment created by these two forces at point O using regular moments, well, we take the cross product of the position vector and our force vector, and we'd add those two up, and we'd find the moment caused by those. And so that would look like our moment about point O equals R sub B cross F plus R sub A cross negative F. And if we use the properties of cross products, we can rewrite that as our moment o about point O equals R sub B cross F minus R sub A cross F. And now we have our two forces that are the same. We can use another property of the cross product to rewrite that as R sub B minus R sub A cross our force vector F. Well, we can note here using the basics of vectors that R sub A plus R equals R sub B. So we'll write that out as R sub B equals R sub A plus our vector R. We'll subtract R sub A to the other side and we'll get the R sub B minus R sub A equals our position vector r that's going between our two forces. Well, this is exactly the same as this, so we'll replace it with r, and so we'll get our moment vector equals r cross f. And that's basically what we had to begin with. And this shows us that our moment can be a, rotating about any point o doesn't matter whether it's on or off that object, as long as you have two forces that are 
parallel to each other, equal in magnitude, but are going in opposite directions. And you have a position vector going from the line of action of one vector to the line of action on our other force vector, and it doesn't matter where those points are. You just have to have one of the forces and your position vector between them. And so you'll use this property a lot, especially in 3D space. Alright guys, so this will be important when you're using couple moments. And if you're just wanting to find the magnitude, which is often what you'll do using just in 2D space, that is going to be the magnitude equals our force times by the perpendicular distance between your two forces. So this is using the exact same variables as it is in here, except for you just have the magnitude of your force and you have the perpendicular distance between those two forces acting as the moment arm. So say if you're wanting to find the moment about this point here, because one of your forces is going through your axis of rotation, it's not going to cause rotation there, but your other force is going to be perpendicular to your moment arm, and that is going to be the magnitude of your force. And so remember that while you can add vectors to find your resultant moment vector, you cannot add your mom the magnitude of your moment up unless your moments are going all in the same direction or in other words they're all rotating along the same axis. Alright guys that's it for this video that's the basics of couple moments and couple forces and if you want some example problems I'll leave links to a couple of mine in, at the end of this video and if you found it helpful hit that like button share it with your classmates if you have any questions or suggestions leave them down in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe.